Yeah, most people here know Rabbi uh, Dr. Shapiro. He's uh, probably not as curious because I'm too famous being my friend. The principal lab was there. He survived that many years afterwards. Uh, but everybody knows he was a big, very big influence on uh, education and Maimonides, specifically in the Boston area in general. The titles I'll leave out. Because we've met before. Uh, I know his close relationship with Alman Rebbe in the room. I was fortunate to get him to speak at the Yom Yuen uh, on Rav Soloveitchik in memory of my father, right before Pesach, uh, at the Rav Ram that was his 20th birthday. Importantly, Rabbi Shapiro and, and his wife Miriam, and proving to be very close, a friend of the family, especially my mother, of the last year since they met again. In, in deference to the judgment of the family, I shall ask for your attention for another few minutes. I hope that what I say will contribute in a meaningful way to our memories of Rabbi Halfinger. A year ago in the Beit Olam, I mentioned how close Rabbi Halfinger was with both the Rav and the Tomne Rebbe, and how much respect they had for him. I want to begin, therefore, by sharing with you part of what Rabbi Tursky said on his father's Ilula of Chav Chav Iyar, 1995 about the function of a hilula or a yartza. He cited the following Gemara in Barakot, the Achyut Zayin Amura. Lo ka'olam hazeh ka'olam haba. Ka'olam haba, ein bo lo achila, velo shtiya, velo kiriya v'rivya, velo masa umatan, velo kina'a, velo sina'a, velo ta'arut, no jealousy, no hatred, no rivalry, ela tzadikim yoshvim, the atroteyam virasheyam, metaphoric crowns on their head, the nehenim miziv ha They derive pleasure from the radiance of the shechina. Now the Gemara at face value is asserting that there is a radical difference between olam hazeh and olam haba. The Tonga Rebbe, however, on the basis of a subtle and creative reading of the proof text cited by the Gemara, concluded, and I quote him, there is a continuum from Olam Hazer to Olam Abba, end quote. What is the nature of that pleasure that Sadiqim experienced in Olam Abba? Rabbi Tversky offered as an example Rambam's formulation in Hilchot Shua Perekhet Alachabe. Commenting directly on the Gemara we just cited, Rambam writes, Amru Chachamim Abishonim, they grasp, the tzadikim and olam abo, grasp aspects of the true nature of God's essence truths that they could not apprehend when they were corporeal. Each individual's religious experiences in Olam Hazeh are a foreshadowing of what the nature of his existence in Olam Haba will be. In Rambam's intellectual framework, one's religious knowledge and insight gained in Olam Hazeh accompanies him to Olam Haba and forms the basis for his deepened perceptions. Again, to quote Rabbi Tversky, so there is not a radical divergence between the two realms of existence. In view of this continuum, we must make a beginning in Olam Hazer, and that process is helped by contemplating exemplars with whom we are familiar." End quote. In line with the Talmud Rebbe's characterization 18 years ago of the function of a yard sign, I submit that we are gathered here this evening to ask ourselves how Rabbi Halfinger laid the groundwork during his Olam Hazer for his eventual experience in Olam Haba. And I know that the question sounds presumptuous, and there are surely many dimensions to its answer. I want to suggest but one of those dimensions, 
one that I think can influence each of us as we reassess our Avodat Hashem this week. A few lines further down, the same Amud in Rabbo, Yudzayin Amud Aleph, the Gemara reports, Ki hapu nifkere rabbanan nivei rabbi ami, the amri lo nivei rabbi Hanina. When the students of the Beit Midrash of Rabbi Ami and some say of Rabbi Hanina took leave of each other, Amri lehochi, ha'olamacha tir'e dechayecha. One would say to the other, you will see, or may you see, your world during your lifetime. What were they wishing each other? So Rashi interprets it as kol tzirachecha timsa. May all your needs be fulfilled in this world. According to Rashi, the two nouns, olamcha and bakayecha, refer to the same time period, namely, our years in olam hazeh. Most Devorshim, however, interpret Olam Cha as a reference to one's Olam Haba. <coughs> they wished each other then that they should get a glimpse of their future reward in, future reward in Olam Haba while they are still Bechayecha in Olam Hazer. To be sure, there are a few Mefarshim who understand this in Rambam-like intellectual terms, but I want to draw your attention to the approach of most Mefarshim including such diverse ones as Rabbi Yefeska Landau, usually known as the Nodan de Yehuda, in his Tzalach, Tzion the Nefesh Hayah, and Rabbi Yosef Chayim of Baghdad, known as the Ben Ishai, in his Ben Yehuda. The Tzalach, Tuan Barachot, Dav Chav Chet Amud Bet, he refers back, though, to our Gemara on Yud Zayin, and he says as follows, Yesh, she'eino zoche li'olam lavo ki yimach armoto. There are those who do not merit Olam Haba until after they die. Avol Yeish, there are those mitkayen bo Olam Cha Tireh B'chayach. There are those for whom Olam Cha Tireh B'chayach is fulfilled. Vehu, that is, ki ikar Olam Haba, hu ha'asaga shenizkeh lahasig et boreinu ulehit davet bo. That is, the essence of Olam Abba is the perception that we merit to perceive our Creator and to cleave to Him. Now it sounds like he's going to continue in a Maimonidean intellectual vein, but he concludes, the Azocheh, the Olam Azeh, Asiat HaMitzvah, the Ahava Demuva, Ubecheshek Nifla, Hinehu Mitzvah Veshmina. He who merits in Olam Azeh, to perform mitzvot with total love and with extraordinary zeal or passion, he thereby cleaves to the Shekhinah. So his view, the Noda Yehuda, his view of the continuum of Olam Hazeh and Olam Abah is an experiential one, not a cognitive one. Similarly, the Ben Ishchai on Baba Metzia, Hei Gimel Amudbet, cites our Gemara and explains it. Tzadikim <coughs> should experience in Olam Hazeh a spiritual delight that is a foretaste of Olam Hazeh as a result of their abundant joy in learning Torah and performing Last year, when I spoke, I did not identify this characteristic of Rabbi Halfing. Like the rest of us, my perceptions were dulled by the suddenness of his Petira. Rav Salvechik, in many of his Hestedim, used to muse over what he called the tragic paradox. When people are with us, close to us, part of our life on teens, we do not sufficiently appreciate them. It is only after they are taken from us that we begin to see retrospectively their special qualities. So last year I focused on Rabbi Hauptfinger's devotion to each of his many communal roles, on his integrity and his uncompromising commitment to halachic standards, as the Bruin spoke of, and on his compassion. These are all aspects of what was his public, outer directed personas. With the hindsight I have gained over the last 12 months, and I do think of him often. 
I have come to appreciate a more personal, more inward quality. Rabbi Halfinger's Simcha Shal Mitzvah, of which the Noda of Yehuda and the Ben Ishchai speak, when they interpret Olam Cha Tiveret Bechayecha. I have many still framed images of Rabbi Halfinger in my mind's eye, as Shaliyah Tzibur, as Misader Kedushin, presiding over a meeting of the Beit Din to interview a prospective Gertzedek, and I have no doubt that this is Gertzedek, the name of his son after your father, whom you don't know. I have no doubt that it was one of many that over the years I knew about, that he just was so sensitive and so supportive psychologically, emotionally, through the process. I'm sure this person feels a lifelong debt of gratitude to your father. Um, dancing with the Talmud Rebbe on Simchat Torah, addressing a bar or bat mitzvah, officiating at a funeral, teaching a Mishnah between Mincha Marib and Abay Havel, discussing with a mashkiach some problem that arose during a catered affair, speaking at a Kiddush in school. You get the point. What, what, in the life of a rabbi, how many such still frames are there in the course of a week, let alone decades? The common feature in all of these is the fervor, the enthusiasm, the sense of purpose and of religious significance that his face and his voice projected. Rambam, you spoke of his getting up every morning and feeling that he has to be a shooter, that Kodesh Baruch Rambam concludes Hilchot Lulav by describing the Simchat Beit HaShoeva in the Beit HaMikdash, where the dancing was led dafka by the rabbinic leaders. He then extrapolates from that specific context to speak about all mitzvot. Ha-simcha she-yismach adam ba-asiyat ha-mitzvah u-ba-ahavat ha-peel she-tzivah bohen avoda gedolabi. It is a supreme form of worship or of divine service. I never saw Rabbi Halfinger do anything in a matter of course, routine way. He lived each moment with an awareness of Lifnei Hashem and Devei Kut Hashem. And he thereby experienced already, during his years in Olam Hazer, a foretaste of his reward in Olam Haba. To paraphrase our Gemara, who ra'a et olamo b'chayar. A few minutes ago, I quoted the Talmud Rebbe's concluding statement about the function of a yard sign. In view of the continuum between Olam Hazer and Olam Haba, we must make a beginning in Olam Hazer, and that process is helped by contemplating exemplars with whom we are familiar." End quote. As we each think back to our own personal, inspiring memories of Rabbi Halfinger's influence upon us, let us resolve, particularly during the three remaining days of Aseret Yimei Shura, to emulate his Simcha Ba'asiyat HaMitzvah for the Ahavat HaKel Shetziva Bohem and to thereby build bridges for ourselves to the next phase of existence, bridges that we hopefully will not traverse for many, many years to come. May we each be granted, together with our ecstatic families, a Gemar Fatima. <laughs>